My name is Vivian James Rigney, I'm President and Senior Executive Coach at Inside Us LLC, Inside Us International Executive Coaching Practice. I'm recently back from Nepal where I climbed Mount Everest. Mount Everest was the seventh continent for me in a goal to climb the highest peak on each of the world's seven continents. When Vivian first told me that he's going to climb Mount Everest, I, I just thought that, oh no, um, it's so dangerous. But then, uh, because he has been climbing six um, high mountains before, and I was sure he would make it. <laughs> the trip took two months. <laughs> Training for Everest has taken about 18 months. One of the most difficult pieces of climbing Everest was through the Kumba Icefall, where you have to basically, Kumba Icefall is a glacier that's going through a very narrow valley, it's dropping about 2,000 feet, lots of crevasses, about 40 of them, and I had to cross 40 ladders crossing these crevasses. And you come to the beginning of the ladder, you, you, you are absolutely faced with yourself, you're faced with huge fear, your senses are going crazy, and you have to go to a place. And it's not a place where you're thinking of Bahamas or you're thinking of somewhere else. A place where you find peace with yourself. And that is a place where there's absolute silence. You go into your own zone. And it's almost like you look at yourself in the mirror. And you have to make a choice. Either I'm going to have enormous fear. It's going to be incredibly difficult. Either I'll fall. I'm going to lose my balance because I don't believe I'm going to do this. Or I'm just going to connect with myself and put everything out of my mind and put one step in front of the other, one in front of the other. And the third choice was what I chose. And that for me was a huge breakthrough. I've always been, I'm terrified of heights. I've always been since I was a kid. So this for me was finding a strategy that worked for me. Before the peak, you see a knife edge, a 30 meter, 100 foot knife edge, either side, which is about 12, 14,000 feet vertical drop to Tibet on the one side and to Nepal on the other. You're walking this knife edge and then you're going up at every step, which is basically it's a jagged rock face with crampons, spikes on your boots. So for me, I came up to the south summit. I was absolutely exhausted. I couldn't get enough air into my lungs. I had to sit down. I was empty, devoid of all energy. I sat down. I had thoughts coming into my mind of not making it down off the mountain. I didn't know what to do. I just sat down. I closed my eyes. The Sherpa helped me change them up with changing my oxygen bottle. I gulped air for 30 seconds and I opened the door and I walked through the door and I walked along the knife edge. I was so exhausted I couldn't look left or right. It didn't faze me that there was 3,000 meters or 14,000 feet of air. I remember walking the last 20 meters and it was an out-of-body experience. I wasn't ecstatic, I was relieved, I was happy, but I was incredibly tired, I was exhausted, I was empty. And the thing about Everest at the top is it's a, it's a beautiful place, you're above everything. There's nothing above you. So you get that feeling that you are at the top of the world. But it's also a very lonely place. It's a place where humans shouldn't really be. And you get that very strong feeling. You get a feeling of people who haven't made it. You get a feeling of people who died right there at that spot. So it's extremely, it's a surreal place, a very humbling place. And physically, your body is screaming at you, you know, to not be here. I learned three key things at Everest. The first was how to manage your fear. The second is how to manage your mind. It's so much about the mind if you're on the mountain. It's, I would say, 70% mind, 30% physical. And the third thing is being learning a lot about humility, about being authentic, being authentic to yourself. One thing that struck me a lot was the fact that 220 people have not come down from Everest. None of these people planned on not returning. And when you're on the mountain, you're so much more aware of life, of the choices that we make every day. 
probably the single most thing I reflected on was actually what's important and what's not important. So working, living in New York City, again, big career, lots going on. And when you're away for two months on a mountain, you really reflect on what is relevant, what really adds value. When I came back, ride right back in Nepal, I remember dropping my bags off my apartment, and walking down 6th Avenue, and watching people, being highly aware of the people around me. The New York face is busy, running, a little stressed, a little serious. I couldn't stop smiling. I was in this place where I had full perspective of what's important and what's not important. So again, the question burning in my mind with what I do with coaching, what I do with my practice and then my career, is to really get people to be aware of the choices they're making in fulfilling their potential, the awareness of potential, on a personal level, but also on a business level, how that feeds back into the business. These two go together. And again, every day I walk to, walk to work since that trip, I'm highly aware of people and are they making the choices? Are they making the courageous, the brave choices that they need to make? Or are they just going down the tunnel, doing the best they can, but not really aware of fulfilling potential and what that means, and what that means to a business?